Hey guys, sorry about the lack of updates lately. We've been working on a whole bunch of smaller projects in the interim between working on the Flying Like Iron Man project. So we haven't had enough content to justify a full episode for Flying Like Iron Man, but let's give you a quick update of what we've been doing. First off, huge thank you to our supporters on GoFundMe. We've raised almost 2,500 US dollars so far. That means we're halfway there to being able to afford one of the Schubler 195 millimeter diameter EDFs that can produce 24 kilograms of thrust. We're really excited to get our hands on one of these because we'd love to start testing it. And as you saw with our jet powered snowboard, we can use these EDFs for more than just flying like Iron Man. There we go. If you haven't had time to check out the GoFundMe campaign yet, please do so. We've posted tons of information about the project and our plan for flying like Iron Man. It's a great resource, especially if you have questions about the project that haven't been answered in the videos so far. We continuously update that page and hopefully you guys will be interested in supporting us. So where are we at right now? Well, while we're continuing to wait for more funding and possible sponsorships for the project, we're continuing to evaluate designing our own EDFs from scratch to try and save some of the high costs of this project. So we're using 3D printing to evaluate our duct and propeller design to try and find the most optimal design that will give us the most thrust with the least power input. Now, an important thing to note is it's very unlikely we're actually going to be able to 3D print the final product, and that's mostly down to the technology we're using to print. Right now we're using FDM printing. Now, FDM printing works by printing layers and layers of plastic. Now, the problem with this is it's not continuous plastic, which means there's actually a lot of weakness in between the layers. And in the last video, when you saw one of these blades explode, part of the reason that happened was just because of how fast it was going. EDF spin at up to about 40,000 RPM. We did the math, and that meant the wingtips were almost breaking the speed of sound. There's just no way this plastic can hold together when it has that weakness in those layers. So, the reason we're using 3D printing right now is because it's the most cheapest option for us to empirically test our designs. Now besides 3D printing being the most economical option, we also get all of our filaments for free from filaments.ca. And we actually have a coupon code for you guys, so if you want to help support the channel, you can buy your 3D printer filament through filaments.ca. We're also looking into flow simulation software, but unfortunately flow simulation calculations are not that easy and there's a bit of a steep learning curve, so we'll have to talk about that in a future episode. One of our subscribers is actually helping us with the flow simulation, and he's actually performed a few uh, test simulations on some of the previous designs that we used in the last video, so let's take a look at that. Now the cool thing with this was the numbers he calculated were actually pretty close to the numbers we recorded, which is a really good sign. It means we are actually able to test these designs on the bench with a 3D printed part. The only problem was, as you saw in the last video, it exploded. But just for shits and giggles, he also did a simulation if we were to use a rubber filament. And this one's kind of cool. We'll use that sound effect. Anyway, like I was saying, flow simulation is a bit more complex, and none of us here at Hacksmith have much experience with it. So we'll talk a bit more about that in the future once we've, once we've learned a bit more about the ins and outs of the software. Now, the real goal here is to make the EDFs out of metal. Now, the most common way this is done is by CNC machining. Many people in the comments have suggested, why don't we just use a 3D printed part, create a mold, and then cast it in aluminum? And while you can do at-home casting, and there's tons of DIY channels that show you exactly how to do it, the problem is it's not very accurate, it's not very precise, and for something like this, it's just not going to work. Because at-home ca casting, unless you have a very expensive setup, you're going to have imperfections in the cast part. You're going to have air bubbles and other little imperfections that can cause huge weaknesses when you speed it up to speeds of 40,000 RPM. So basically, it would be way too much risk for us to be able to cast a blade and actually use it. Is it possible? Probably. But it would probably also take us a lot and a lot of tries in order to get it right. And it might just be cheaper to actually get them CNC machined which again is how they're actually made usually. A quick thing to note is most professionally made EDF blades are actually CNC machined. Some can be cast, but they usually are cleaned up using a CNC machine or polished very accurately. Because the next big issue with making an EDF is balancing the EDF. So if you look at the back of this one, you can see it was actually dynamically balanced. So they actually used a very expensive machine to spin this around and make sure the center of gravity is in fact in the center of rotation. That's why they've drilled different holes and installed set screws to add mass to adjust that center of gravity right to the middle. 
So while it could be possible to cast these, it's only really economical for a mass production standpoint. For us, since we're only making a few, it makes a lot more sense to spend a bit of money and actually have them CNC machined. Now we would CNC machine them at home with our Tormach PCNC 440 milling machine, but the bed size on the Tormach is a bit too small for doing the EDFs that we want to make. Now it would be possible to design a bigger EDF with individual blades that kind of slip into a central hub, and then we could do that on the Tormach. But we're kind of afraid that will be a couple hundred hours of engineering design time to get to the point to be able to actually do that and have it functional. So for the time being, we're going to stick with 3D printing for testing and evaluating our designs, and we're going to pay for these to be CNC machined by a professional. Now, depending on the supplier we use to have our blades CNC'd, they might be able to do the dynamic balancing themselves which is important because a dynamic balancer is a couple thousand dollars and it's just something we can't really afford for the shop right now. Now we do have a static balancer coming from Hobby King, but unfortunately static balancers, they aren't the greatest. Uh, it's not, you, you can kind of use them to balance a prop like this and it's better than not balancing them at all, but it's, it's far from perfect. So it's really also important to have them dynamically balanced. And an important thing to note was that 3D printed EDF that we spun up that wasn't balanced whatsoever. That was straight off the 3D printer with an acetone coat on, this, on the, uh, the blade, which means it was probably quite a bit out of balance and maybe that was part of the reason why it exploded in such a spectacular fashion. So to reiterate our design, we're gonna use 3D printing and flow simulation software to design an optimized EDF blade larger than what's commercially available. So then once we've decided on our final design, we'll be outsourcing it to have it manufactured. Now, one other thing we were maybe looking at is the possibility of using um, pre-made propellers because you can get these quite cheap, they're injection molded, and it's possible that we might be able to design one that could use this in a larger duct, but more on that in a future video. So to help us with 3D printing, uh, James Bruton from X-Robots has actually offered to lend us a hand. All right, got a special episode for you guys today. We are in... Colin Furs' garage. I suppose I should hop in. And we've also got James Bruton from X Robots here. So we're going to hang out for the day. Yep, I'm going to try and get these guys to start a pulse jet engine uh, because loads of people seem to have trouble with it and they want to see one running. It's a perfect video, really. If you don't know James Bruton, he's basically the closest thing to a real life Tony Stark we have. I don't know how many Iron Man suits he has now that he's built himself using 3D printing, but when it comes to 3D printing, he's pretty much the expert on the internet. So, once we've come up with a more finalized design, James Bruton is going to print off a few more of them in different materials to help us with our testing to see which material could possibly work best, especially if we might end up using a different 3D printing technology to actually produce these instead of CNC machining. Because there's a chance that using SLA or stereolithography, we might be able to actually have our blades 3D printed at a fairly low cost and actually work and be able to spin at those speeds. But again, more on that on a dedicated 3D printing EDF video coming soon. Now, we did also look into metal 3D printing. Unfortunately, it's really expensive. From a service like shapeways.com, the blade that we showed off in the last video would have cost us $900 to print out of aluminum. And the other problem is the surface finish isn't quite that good, so we'd still have to polish it somehow, which could be very difficult to do. So, once we have our EDF design complete, what's next? Well. Hopefully we'll have raised enough money on GoFundMe or found enough sponsorships to be able to afford some of the more expensive parts we need. But in the interim, what we're going to do is we're going to 3D print a scale model of the hexacopter jetpack we're planning on using. Now, this model will be completely 3D printed, but it will be underpowered. It wouldn't be enough to actually lift me. But it will allow us to control the EDFs individually and be able to test the flight control system to make sure we can get stabilized flight. Heck. We might even be able to use it to fly the Iron Man costume we received recently from the Armor Factory. So please note, this design is nowhere near done yet. This is just a quick mock-up in our CAD software to show you what it kind of looks like. Uh, it still needs to be modified a bit to make room for the pilot, but this is just the starting point. Anyway, rest assured we're working as hard and as fast as possible. Uh, Ian and I are in the shop 9am to 9pm, practically 6 days a week, 
and that's just to make ends meet. So if you guys are interested in supporting the channel, it will be greatly appreciated. Plus, you get access to behind-the-scenes content and access to our private Discord chat room where you can talk with the Hacksmith team and other supporters one-on-one. -on -one. And don't forget, it's only a dollar a month to become a Patreon. That's less than a cup of coffee. Thanks for watching.